So, um, uh, yeah, the, it, it was, it's, the, the problem is estimating the effects of small voltage and frequency changes on industrial induction motor loading. Uh, it would seem like a simple problem. It's surprising how complex it, <laughs> it became when we actually uh, went into the details. Uh, I've, although I promise I'm not gonna show any uh, detailed equations here. The, the, the paper has enough of those if you wanna go into the details. So try and uh, go into just the, describe the problem as much as possible. Um, now, the, specifically, the research was uh, motivated um, uh, by TVA. Uh, they were interested in knowing the extent, the, the design of their diesel generator, um, uh, how it would be able to tolerate any uh, excursions around its operating point. And that was for a variety of reasons. Uh, for themselves, they want to know if you change the frequency and the voltage, uh, would the generator be able to uh, take up that load? Uh, it's a compliance issue also with the Nuclear uh, Regulatory Commission. Right? They are required to be able to answer questions, specific questions about their diesel generator capability. If they change the nominal point uh, for any reason, then, I mean, is it back to design or could they come up with a quick method of estimating whether they're generators were, were the, their standby diesel generators, I'm talking about standby diesel generator in isolated mode, uh, would it be able to carry the uh, accident loads at the nuclear power station? Uh, now the, the, the problem is not, is, shouldn't, is not necessarily specific to the nuclear power industry. It has, if you, if you want to, if you look at the excursions around the uh, nominal point, then it could be used in uh, uh, load uh, voltage con, uh, con, uh, con, uh, con, conservation, so, uh, studies, they could uh, be used in power factor correction or uh, any other purpose. So, uh, and, and the other, the motivation as, as well is that there's not really a lot of, there's not very much literature. You would think there was, but there's not. There are descriptive, there are statistical studies that were carried out uh, by EPRI and by other researchers to determine the sensitivities. Uh, obviously for low voltage conservation, there's a lot to I mean, look at general loads and look at how they respond to changes in voltage. But these are not expressions. They are not analytical expressions. They are statistical studies, okay? Uh, which apply to a particular load pattern or particular load um, uh, 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 mix, so, or categories. So what we were after are specific uh, expressions which you can use. Uh, Westinghouse had, had some literature, but oversimplified in our opinion, uh, a bit simpler, simple, uh, a little bit ambiguous as well. Uh, there was not, not, not enough detail on reactive power, not enough detail on that, so the, uh, a little bit simplified. Uh, EPRI had some graphical uh, study, so also not enough uh, analytical study. So we, we carried out, um, as I said, we you think the problem was simple. We actually went into the details. It's enormously complex. So we, we came up with the expressions that we thought were kind of exact, and then we came up with simplified expressions where you could use stator side parameters like stator current. You, unfortunately, you do, for reactive power, you, you, need, you do need the magnetization curve. You, you can't get around that uh, because of the, uh, it, it's somewhat into saturation, the, the motor would be on full load, so, it's, so you need this incremental uh, 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 reactance. Uh, for, for the purpose of estimating uh, changes in reactive power. Uh, otherwise, this, these are just a sample of the, uh, of the simplified equations for uh, del P in response to del V, del Q in response to del V. There are other expressions for, this was for constant torque motor, we did it, or for variable torque motor, we did reactive power uh, for uh, constant torque, a variable torque, we did frequency sensitivity. Frequency sensitivity is, is a little bit easier to, to predict. So we did also for active and uh, for reactive power for constant torque motors and um, uh, and variable torque motors. Uh, these are the results. Uh, so we're not going to bore you with all the uh, 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 equations, but uh, there is a simplified block, for example. Um, so this is for the power, active power sensitivity in response to voltage. For it's very small, around zero. It can be plus a little. And or minus a little, but it's around zero. There's not much sensitivity for 
active power uh, in response to voltage. Reactive power is another story. Uh, so it's uh, a little bit less than three. It can be a little bit more than three. Um, and one of the main players here is the saturation of the magnetizing curve. Uh, so these are for motors. That we, we, we compared simulation with our calculated expressions. We have two calculated expressions, one, sim one uh, original, which is elaborate, and the other one is simplified. So we compared both. Uh, we got very good um, agreement uh, between the results. We looked at, we at frequency. Uh, frequency for constant torque motor, uh, the power varies as the frequency for variable torque motor. It also follows the affinity law, so um, where the torque is proportional to the square of the uh, frequency, so the power is actually proportional to the cube of the frequency, and that's that was no surprise there. Uh, for the reactive power, it's smaller. Um, it's for uh, constant uh, torque motors, it's about one to two. For variable torque motors, about zero. Um, and uh, then we did a test. Now, one of the reasons I like working with TDA is that they always like to test our work. They don't take our, uh, well, I mean, they, they sponsor this, uh, this work and, and they always, uh, we have Mark Bowman with us. Uh, it, uh, they always like to uh, say, okay, your results are good, but we need to test it. I mean, this is, this is our network. We need to, we didn't know if this is, we did that before in previous research. It was uh, fundamental, uh, it was very successful. We did this again. Uh, TVA, they did a they did a test. Actually, they uh, exploited a test that was already scheduled, and they just incorporated these measurements within the test. So, it was a voltage reduction at, at steady frequency. Uh, they looked at the uh, active power. The active power is so much fuzzy because it's not it's barely changing. It's very small. We did detect some change in active power for voltage about 0.6. Uh, um, this is a sensitivity, which means. Uh, 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 percentage power divided by percentage voltage. Our prediction is somewhat around zero, plus or minus. Uh, there, was, there wasn't much surprise here because the loads are a little bit smaller. If you go back to the expression very quickly, um, when, when you have a smaller load, IS, when the state of current is, is small, the, the power changes becomes change, uh, change it tends to become positive so we were able to yes yeah, sorry and so yeah and uh, so oh I hope I didn't yeah so uh, so we did the test it was successful and uh, we got the we got uh, a good, good agreement with the uh, with the with the uh, theory as uh, to our satisfaction so research uh, shows that uh, uh, the uh, the theory and the calculator expressions agree uh, very much with the simulations and we think that this research fills a gap uh, regarding uh, uh, the, the, the definitive expressions for active and reactive power uh, changes in motor load around the normal. So I thank you very much indeed, and I would welcome you to come to the poster session afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you.